how do you take a standard drop down list like this full of blanks and turn it into one where all the blanks have gone and not only that when you change the list of customers it dynamically updates to include the new list also with no blanks okay so i'm going to create a new sheet here why don't we call it from scratch so let's take this sales data here in fact let's just copy all of that like that now i'm going to also show control f1 to show my ribbon so that you can see which buttons are being pushed etc first off i had a little formula in here which picks up the customer based off of whatever's in this cell. So I'll show you how to do this. It's uh, not important for the drop down list, but it will make it look like the original here. Can't remember what we had, something like that. So I put this as customers or something like that anyway, and centered it there. And then this one, I just had a number in it saying which column I want to pick up. So what I, all I want to do here, I'm going to go through this really quickly because this video is about drop down list, not creating uh, formulas, but I'm going to use the if formula to check if there's any sales in a particular column. And the column I'm going to check is the one up here. So I'm going to say if offset, that just allows us to move between columns dynamically. So we're going to start with that, starting B5. We don't want to move any rows and the amount of columns across we want to move is just whatever number we have put in there. Fix that. So if that is um, blank, give me a blank. Otherwise, give me the customer name. Right. Now, if I drag that down there, you can see it's picking up customers wherever that there's a number. Same with Express Air, same with regular air. Okay, so that's how I set that up. Right, drop down list, the important bit. Right, developer tab, broken record again. Haven't got the developer tab. Click on here, customize the ribbon, more commands. Customize the ribbon, tick or untick, roughly tick, developer tab. And if you can't do that, you need to talk to your system administrator because it's been disabled. Right, let's give ourselves a bit of width. Right, in design mode, we are going to insert an active X control. Now, I'll just show you how you might do a standard one. So I held down Alt there, by the way, when I drew that, so it clicks into the grid lines. And then I'm gonna click properties and there's a few almost standard things that I change. If you're using one of these it's a combo box inside a worksheet and you're using it to select items to drive other data. So the first one is we want it as a list rather than a combo. That stops people entering you know, anything they like, right? So we can rely on the output of this list being something um, that has been chosen. Special effect sunken, that's just annoying. It's all right on a, a user form, but on a worksheet, what it does is restricts the amount of space you've got to put your font in. All right, talking of which, your font size, generally speaking, you're gonna need to knock one off of it because whatever the spreadsheet, you know, if the spreadsheet standard is 11, you need to probably go down to 10 to ensure that you're not cutting off the tails of things like the letter Y. Uh, border style, you're going to need a single border, well you want a single border on it just to make it look good. And uh, if you, you know, you might want to change that to a black border or whatever kind of colour scheme you're running. So that's pretty much it from an aesthetics point of view, it kind of looks alright there. If I switch that off, you'll see, not linked to anything, but kind of looks alright. Back in design mode, click on it again. Link cell is your output, so we can actually do that. I'm going to put J6. It's kind of handy to have the output cell underneath the uh, drop down sometimes, just sort of hides it from view, keeps the spreadsheet looking nice, but that could be anywhere. The list fill range. Now, this 
is going to be, you could say, this range here. And before we go and do that, let's just set that range up as a named range. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing and I'll just call it, because we've already got a filtered one, I'm going to call it a customer list, right? Hit the enter key, very important, don't just click out. So I mean, that probably wasn't very clear, I was just entering it up there. If you haven't got the formula bar on view, by the way, you can switch that on and off here. But anyway, that's giving me my customer list. And so if I click anywhere now, I can go there, customer list, that's it. So I could just put on there and customer list. But I will do exactly that. Come out of design mode. Now we've got our list with all the annoying blanks. Right. Let's widen that. Uh, I need to widen that then. While I'm at it, I'm just going to take the grid lines off now because we've got what we want, generally speaking, and it's all looking good. On this, by the way, what we need to do is get shot of the list fill range because if we're going to populate this list using a little bit of code, seven lines of code, by the way, so not too bad at all. If we're going to do that, then anything in this list filled list fill range box is going to completely screw things up. So delete it. You could put a line of code in to delete it, but why bother? I'll just delete it there. This is being called combo box one. I'm going to call it, I need to go to the properties to do that then. Combo box customer. If I click on there and hit View code. All right, I'll move this over here a bit. Right. So you see what it's done. It said, created me a little macro saying that's going to run. It's an event procedure. It's going to run when the combo box value changes. That's not what I want because when the co in order for it to change, somebody has to select something. But we want the list to be populated before anything selected. So what I'm going to do is attach this to drop button click. And I found just with personal experience really that drop button click is a good one to attach this stuff to. The only problem with this drop button click thing <laughs> is that it runs twice. It runs when you actually click the button and then when the list closes, it runs again. What we need to do is identify whether the list is opening or the list is closing. And I've got a little technique that if you've seen some of my other videos on drop down boxes, you might have seen me use before, where I just have a little cell on the spreadsheet with a number one in. And every time the macro runs, I times it by minus one. So the first time it runs, it's one, times it by minus one makes it minus one. So the next time the macro runs, it's minus one. And that way I can tell whether the box is being coming down when it's one or going up when it's minus one. So I can put a little if statement in here to say, you know, and de detect that. So I'm gonna set that up right now on the spreadsheet. So I don't need this. So all I need to do is have a number one somewhere on this spreadsheet. And I put it anywhere. Now, I've already used the sort of hidden cell behind there as the result of the drop down, J6. Um, so just so it's nice and visible to you, I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to actually just format copy that and put it as a really light blue number one. So we need to set it number one by default because when we click down, we want it to be number one. Right, much better to give that a name range too. So I'm gonna call it end tag. And the reason for that is that if someone starts inserting or deleting rows in your spreadsheet, you can reference that directly end tag and it'll, it'll move with everything else, right? Aha, I can't call it end tag because I've already used that on the original. So I'm gonna call this end tag two. There we go, right. Code then. Right. If range and tag two dot 
value equals one, then just put a little comment. Um, the list coming down. So populate. All right, list coming down. And then I'm going to put else list going up action selected item. So list is coming down. We want to populate it. Right. So we need to take this combo box and we need to populate it. So first thing is we want to clear it. Right. Second thing, we want to populate it with all our customer names. Well, we only want to do that where they're not equal to blank. And we've given them a, a range name. So what we can do is have a little loop. And if we put for each. So this is a type of loop where it's a for next loop if you're interested or you want to look that up. But what we're going to say is for every cell in that range, that end customer list named range, we want to add a name if it's if it's not blank. All right. So I'm going to call this uh, O cell in range. And the range was called customer list, I believe. Uh, dot cells. O cell is just a variable I've just made up on the spot, but a cell is an object, so hence I put a, a letter O in, in the front. And you can't use just cell because that obviously means something in code, right? So for each cell in that list, we're going to do something. And then underneath, you just have to put next O cell. So that's our loop inside here. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to say that if O cell, stick to the dot value, is not blank, then we want to add it to our combo box, right? So we're going to say combo box customer dot add item brackets, and we want to add the cell value. Actually, we do need an end if. Now, let's have a look, see what's happening here. Now we need to come out of developer mode, design mode, sorry. Click on there, well, it's supposed to be working. Why is it clearing each time? It doesn't matter what I select, right? And it's because we haven't done anything about this. So this is what we need to do. Here, at the end of this, all this code, every single time, we just need to say it equals itself times minus one. So it goes to minus one when we click it because it's populated the list. As we select, it goes to one, which stops the code running. And that, my friend, is it. You can then obviously run whatever you like off of this because this cell underneath is giving the value. I mean, if I go back into design move and move this, for example, this is outputting whatever I put onto this list. So you can use this to drive a chart, sales forecast, I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be customers, it could be anything you like. Now you can download this spreadsheet completely free. Obviously, I don't want any details from you or anything like that. Hit that, download it, you've got the template, it's all set up and you can just adapt it to your own ends. And there you go. All your blanks gone from drop down lists and everything looking a lot more professional. And I hope that's going to save you some time and make you look good in whatever kind of work you're doing. Right, I'll see you soon.